All right. So the day that I found out that I failed the bar exam. Well, first, my name is Morgan Ladden, and I'm currently an assistant city attorney for the city of Houston. And my journey to getting here is one that has taken a lot of ups and downs. And so what I'm focusing on exploring with you all today is the day I found out I failed the bar exam. And the day I found out, I can't say that I was super surprised because of all the signs that I ignored leading up to even taking the bar exam. As law students, as attorneys, we're very driven people. We have goals, we wanna be involved in things and, and we wanna do our best at everything that we do. And for me, I was so overwhelmed between uh, being president of organizations, sitting on committees at school, um, just interning and all of these things that I had taken on, being a part of our mock trial program, being chair of the board of advocates, I was super involved. And I made it to a point where life was just a lot to handle. And then not only was it the stress of all of those things that I was dealing with, then not only that, y'all, I had this dream, this desire to graduate a semester early. So all throughout law school, I took additional classes. I took summer classes. I did all of this because I wanted to graduate a semester early, which I did. And I'm grateful that it happened. But that last semester, with all of my commitments on top of graduating early, on top of the fact that um, I also got into a car accident, a hit and run car accident, leading up to exams my last semester, which literally left me with back pain. I could not um, stand for longer than 30 to 45 minutes. Um, sitting down for longer than that was also very uncomfortable. So I had to take my exams virtually without being able to really sit or stand comfortably. Just so many things going on. And all of this is in my last semester. And then I thought that I was going to be able to, within eight weeks, prepare myself for the bar exam. Um, so when I found out, I can't say that I was super surprised because I never got peace even after I took the exam. I wasn't at peace um, because I knew that I didn't give it my all. And not just I didn't give it my all, I couldn't give it my all. And the biggest lesson that I've learned throughout this entire process is the fact that we have to know when it's time to pause. We have to know our limits and that it does not say anything about the quality of who you are, your work ethic or anything else to know that it's time to take a break. So my biggest thing as you are going into any type of season like bar prep that requires so much of you is that we have to be willing to sit back and assess where we are as people and to know whether or not this is the right timing for me to be going and doing the things that I choose to do. Because knowing your limits is an important piece of life and giving, giving yourself the space to be able to say, you know what, this is not the right time. Maybe I need to sit back and take a break. Maybe I need to reevaluate myself. Maybe I need to be able to understand um, what's best for me in this season. The other thing that I really learned is how much I was basing my decisions and the things that I was doing, even the, the choices I was making as far as organizations and commitments and everything else on this, this view of what I believed a successful law student needed to do. I had a view of, of what um, it meant to be excellent in law school. And I was trying to measure up to this view and this idea of what people had built of me. And that was a huge life lesson as well to say, you know what? Yes, I believe that being involved in mock trial and leading organizations and all of these things are skills that are going to aid me in the future. 
And yes, I want to graduate early because I want to be able to just get this done with, to move on into the next chapter of my life. And yes, people are encouraging me to do two and three competitions in a semester for mock trial and then try and test the waters with moot court because they see my skills and talents and want to push me into the forefront and all of these other things. But we cannot base our lives based off of what other people are thinking and what other people are desiring for us. Nobody knows what you need better than you do. Um, several times I literally felt God telling me that I needed to wait, that the timing was not right for me, but I ignored it because I didn't want to look weak. I didn't want it to seem like I, um, I was giving up or that I was less of a law student because I didn't take the bar exam right after I graduated. Um, I just, I didn't want to accept where my mental health was and the fact that a break is really what I needed. I didn't want to accept those things. So because of that, I pushed through. I ignored all the signs God was putting right in front of my face. And because of that, I ended myself uh, in a situation where I could have made a different choice and I feel like I would have been in a better position moving forward. Now, the silver lining within all of it is that is if I would have trusted the timing that I felt uh, for me, that I felt that God was leading me down, then I would have been able to see why I needed to wait. And the why I needed to wait was not just about learning my limits, learning to trust myself, learning to uh, know how to assess what's best for me in any particular season. But the other thing was all the right doors opened up for me on the timeline that I did not want to accept. That's the crazy part. So I wanted to take the bar exam in February of 2020. Um, and so no, February of 2021 was when I was scheduled to take the bar exam. And I took it that time. All the while, I just really felt like I needed to wait till July of 2021 to take it, but I ignored it. So I failed the bar exam. And when I failed the bar exam, I lost the job that I had set up because that job was one that I was supposed to move right into once I got my passing bar results. Um, and I ended up not being able to afford, afford my living expenses. So I had to move in with family, just all of these things when I could have avoided it. And if I would have waited to the July exam, I would have seen that the perfect job for me opened up right when I got my scores after the July exam. And when I say perfect job, perfect job because it allows me to be in a space where I have very supportive people around me, people who are willing to pour into me, um, and the ability to take things a little bit slower as I learn how to transition myself from law school into life as an actual attorney. Whereas the job that I was trying to move into, if I would have passed in February, honestly would have been a job where I would have no time. I would have been making the exact same amount of money, but working for an attorney who is just very high stakes, just pushes hard work, hard work, hard work, which is great. Um, but I knew for me as a person, I wanted my transition into this profession to be one where I have the time to really assess how to put my systems together, uh, really learn procedure that you don't really get to practice in law school, just all of these things where I am so much more comfortable, I'm able to catch my breath and to build myself and to do all of these things that just I wouldn't have been able to do had I taken the first job that I was trying to move into. So in general, the big moral of the story is that Failing the bar exam is not the end of the world. Um, failing the bar exam is not a space where it says anything about who you are as a person. I'm still the same qualified attorney. I'm still the same person who was um, all throughout law school, just people looking to me for this and looking to me for that and, and just being super involved. 
the quality of who I am as an attorney has absolutely nothing to do with my initial bar scores. I'm pretty sure the people I work with now don't even know that I filled the bar the first time. Um, and post law school, those things don't matter. Um, I know that I use it as encouragement knowing that there were so many successful women who failed the bar exam their first time and moved on. One of my mentors, I didn't even know it, failed the bar exam the first time. Uh, Michelle Obama, when I read her book, failed the bar exam the first time. Just so many women who went on and did amazing things. So it's important for us to know, number one, that we have to assess ourselves and know what's best for us. And it may be that when you assess yourself and you see you need to take a break and wait, postpone it. Don't do it when you don't feel like you can really give it your all. But then also, if you get to the point where you don't get the scores that you want, understand that it's just time to sit back, reevaluate, and figure out what you want to do moving forward. All those lessons that I told you about, they made my second time taking the bar exam so much better because, again, I was able to trust my gut. I was able to, to really sit back and think about what's best for me and all those things that people tell you all day long. Do this to pass the bar exam. Do that. You need to have this type of study schedule. You need to be able to, um, you know, do it this way or that way. I was able to put myself in a place where I was like, you know what? First of all, I've done this before. I know what worked and what didn't work. And right now, at this point, I'm going to trust what works for me. I've learned already how to quiet the noise in my mind and all of the voices from everyone else around, you know, the things that you need to do or the, the way to be successful. And I am learning to trust my gut, to trust me as a person, to trust that I know me better than anyone else, to know that I'm not trying to play anybody else's game but my own. I have a path and that path is for me. The timing of my life is for me. And regardless of if it looks like somebody else's path or not, I know that I have to trust that what's for me is for me. And the more that we can get into that space, the more that you can stand firm on that, the better you will be, not only as a law student, not only as a bar exam taker, but as an attorney. Because as an attorney, there are going to be time after time after time that you have to trust your gut, that people can have all these theories and, and, and plans and procedures of, of, of how they do things. But you have to trust and know who you are as an attorney and you have to stand on it. So the quicker that you can learn those lessons, the quicker that you can learn to be resilient and to bounce back, the better you are as a bar exam taker, the better you are as an attorney. So don't get down about filling the bar exam. When you become an attorney, whether it's as a litigator or a transactional attorney and a deal doesn't go the way you want it to, or you lose a case, uh, or you don't get the settlement at the, the dollar amount that you really want it to be, you've got to learn how to be resilient. You have to know that those things don't define you as a person. So regardless of if you are in a space where you did not get the scores that you wanted, trust me and know that this is just an opportunity for you to learn and for you to grow. So uh, stay encouraged, be strong, be resilient, and know that this journey is your journey and no one else can take that away from you. Add to stream. Hello. Morgan, you did so good, girl. Like, you were on top of it. Um, and you just had this story, right? I told you you knew what to say, girl. I knew it. <laughs> you knew it in my heart, right? You knew exactly what you needed to tell the people because you've been trying to say it and verbalize it for years. And it's just like, well, when do I get a chance to tell my story? When do I get a chance to tell them exactly what it is, right, that we go through and that emotion, right, that you felt? And you probably haven't shared it in many spaces before because, I mean, it's not really a safe feeling to tell people, like, I didn't feel that smart. I didn't feel that great. I didn't feel that awesome. I felt like crap. And I had to figure out how to say, I am still good. I am still important. And it doesn't matter if I have to leave this job. I can figure out how to get 
to the next step of my life without making a bar exam be my indicator for success. So I yeah. think that you covered that really well. Um, and I love the, how you brought it in for a landing um, and had the moral of the story. Um, just basically just don't let anybody else run your life. And I can identify with that on a deep level because I let federal clerkship be a goal of mine. And that was pushed on me from law school. I didn't want to be a federal clerk. I don't even like that job. It's not even a good job for me because my personality doesn't work that way. So just keep that in mind and just know that like, we all have our own successful, uh, you know, stories and things that we're doing. But the biggest thing that we have learned from your story today, right, is that you decided, right, that this is your path and nobody was going to tell you to stop. And that is so beautiful. Uh, before we end out, is there anything else you want to say, how they can contact you or reach out to you if they're inspired by your story? Uh, yes. So you can reach out to me um, on Instagram. Uh, at Morgan Janelle. Janelle is G-E-N-E-L-L. Uh, and also you can contact me by email if you'd like, morgan.latin90 at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you, Morgan. And Shana, we are ready to sign out.